Section 9.2.1, Web Vulnerabilities, Part 1. The Open Web Application Security Project, or OWASP, is a nonprofit organization that gathers and shares data about the most commonly exploited web application vulnerabilities. Their goal is to help web developers improve the security of their code. There is a top 10 list published every two or three years. The OWASP top 10 provides rankings of and remediation guidance for the top 10 most critical web application security risks. The most common list is from 2021. This list ranks these risks based on the severity of the vulnerabilities, how often the security issues are seen, and the degree of their possible impact. The detailed information available on the OWASP site includes guidance on writing code to avoid or fix these vulnerabilities. The current list with the most severe first include broken access control, cryptographic failures, injection, and secure design, security misconfiguration, vulnerable and outdated components, identification and authentication failures, software and data integrity failures, security logging and monitoring failures, and server-side request forgery or SSRF. Why is it so hard to write secure web code? One reason may be that web programming education usually doesn't include security concepts. But even programmers who are aware of security risks find it difficult to create truly secure websites because a website must be available to anyone and most websites allow user interaction. It would be much easier to have a static page open only to authenticated users who can't have any interaction with the page. But that takes us back to the 1990s and is very boring. So we need to have websites that give users content that is interactive. Interactivity includes practices like keeping track of user preferences or shopping carts. In the old days, a user could access a website multiple times, but each access would be a new event to the web server because it uses the HTTP protocol, which is stateless. This means that the website will not automatically retain any information about previous activity from a web client. To keep track of the user visit, which is sometimes called a session, this web server needs to use a technology-based HTTP to save details such as preferences and activities. This will make the browsing session stateful. The website is tracking user information and activity. Remember from the last session that HTTP is an acronym that stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Slide 4. A key ingredient to interactive browsing is that a browser remembers you while you move from page to page on the website. A session is a user's visit to a website during a specific time frame. To give continuity during the visit, the website must recognize this browser on this IP address plus this username if logged in. Websites use session IDs to remember this. Session IDs are unique codes that are assigned to the user's connection for a period of time to keep track of the website's state and associate that state with a user. The session ID that is used to identify the user throughout their stay on a website can be in many different forms. This is decided by the website, not the user. 
Session IDs can be in the form of a cookie or a URL or a form field where you are required to log in to the site for verification. If an attacker gets hold of your active session ID, they may be able to authenticate and interact with the website as if they are you. This is not good. Most websites do have an expiration time on the session ID to limit how long it can be used, and these session IDs are considered active. This will help mitigate the risk of session hijacking. To get a look at URL-based session IDs, try out some of the CyberStart challenges listed in the lesson extension. Session hijacking is a common part of web attacks. Session hijacking is when a malicious actor gets possession of a user's active session ID and impersonates the user in a connection to the website. This will often be just one piece of the attack. For example, when an attacker targets a network, they will want to have administrative rights to make changes or execute scripts. By hijacking a session, they will be able to access that account without cracking or stealing the password. While the session ID is still unexpired, the malicious actor can create new administrative accounts or execute the malware. Some methods for session hijacking include predicting the session ID based on information about what ID format is used on that website, forcing the session ID using a phishing attack or exploit, capturing the session ID through sniffing or adversary in the middle attacks, or manipulating session IDs contained in the URL.